Good morning, another Friday morning and it's 2020 and I'm here to give you a dedicated live video. Uh, my name's Karen Frankel and I'm here to show you that talent is a bit underrated or overrated, sorry, and that anyone can do it. Um, I'd love to give you all information about enjoying art and drawing in, uh, in particular. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating what I do with mixed media. Um, when people ask me what I do, I usually say, oh, I'm an artist. And then they say, what kind of artist? And I say mixed media and their faces are kind of, we don't know what mixed media is. Or they think it's multimedia, which means you're on radio and TV and published in newspapers and magazines, uh, which is a whole other ball game. So I decided to explain myself a little bit better and show you what I do for mixed media. There's a lot of um, different meetings, but quite literally it means um, using different media and what is, or different mediums, which is not the, the plural, but it explains it a bit better. So a trusty pencil. Hi, um, Louise, nice to see you on board. Um, so a trusty pencil is one media, no, medium. Um, using a paint stick is another medium. Using charcoal is another medium. Using pastels is another medium. Using oil paint or acrylic, they are two different mediums. Uh, media, uh, I'm going to be confusing that word all the time, so just bear with me, I'm sure you'll understand. Watercolor is a different media. So, um, that's what mixed media is all about, and it's using it all in one painting, although not necessarily all, seldom all. Um, sometimes tradition encompasses um, two different media. For example, watercolor, if you have drawn your watercolor in pencil first, which is quite common, and then you do watercolor over the top, then that is not usually called mixed media, even though there's pencil and watercolor together. Um, um, some people do pen and wash, and they've already explained what their media is. It's, a, it's black pen usually, and wash meaning a wash of watercolor. So that is a specific type of mixed media. So today I'm going to explain what I do, and I use lots of different things. So sometimes I will start off with one particular thing, in fact, most of the time, um, with an acrylic, and then I will add things to that. And my head is second guessing me now and I'm thinking, no, but I stick paper down first and I do all sorts of things. So what I've got on the, on the um, easel at the moment is a, is a little square canvas. I have primed that canvas, which means painted it with um, a gesso. And um, hi, Liz, welcome. Lovely to see you. Um, nice to be able to see the people coming on board. I've got my computer set up this time so that my right hand is my proper right hand um, instead of my phone, which shows you different, uh, um, the opposite, the mirror image. So I have painted my white canvas with a white gesso, which helps things to stick to it and helps the paint to stick to it. I've more or less randomly stuck down bits of my tissue paper. So these bits here have been colored before. And this um, bit is a white piece that I have prepared before as well. And I've used, in this case, black ink. So I love the various textures that I get um, to be able to stick those over. So I'm actually going to stick a little bit on that. It probably won't dry enough <coughs> for me to draw on that specific canvas or, or the place where I stick it. Um, so, what I'm using is PVA glue, which is white wood glue, and I mix it with a little bit of, um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called, a little bit of water, basically, but there is also a binding medium that makes it behave a little bit more like acrylic. So, I've dropped my black piece, let's grab another. Actually, I'm going to demonstrate on this canvas later, so I'm going to keep it dry. And I'm going to pop up. I've got lots of these random bits of, of drawings and paper 
that have um, been around and for some of you that have been following me, you know, I've been talking about um, Dare to Stuff It Up. Well, here's a Dare to Stuff It Up. This was done in a workshop, wasn't madly happy with it. So I've dipped my, my brush in glue. The consistency of it doesn't really matter. Somewhere between milk and cream, I'm not really bothered about um, accuracy from that point of view. And I am... Um, Putting the glue down, I'm rather randomly sticking this over. Because the tissue paper is porous, um, I'm actually pasting it on over the top. What you find when you stick paper down, especially if it's very, very thin paper, so that's a bit of the paper um, uncolored and that's a bit of colored paper, is that as it gets wet, it stretches. So. I particularly like that because it creates wrinkles. And when I go back to my dry canvas, you'll see why I like wrinkles. So this is just a, a pretty much a demonstration of how I slap it on. Um, grab a bit of, so I am seldom precious about this. And you can see some of it's bunched up a little bit, so you can see it's white. And if I bring that closer to the camera, no, it needs to be in the light. I will post pictures of this, these. But hopefully you can see that there's little wrinkles forming. And I haven't thought about a plan at this stage because I'm just chucking it on to show you how I glue it on. But I might actually go a little bit with what's there and at least put a scrape like that. Now, I have a suspicion that these yellow bits under here were created with an oil pastel. And as I mentioned in my email, oil pastel, oil doesn't mix with water, which you should know. But it means that this water-based glue won't stick to it. So I might find later on when I come here that that piece of paper lifts off. So I've just got to deal with it at the time. So just chuck that on. That won't be able, we won't be able to use that in this demonstration, but just to show you how I stick the paper on. Okay, the next thing I commonly do is I add ink. And sometimes, like in some of the pictures um, I've recently put on, I grab my ink. I put this flat on the ground and I have a trusty spray bottle with me and I literally pour that ink on and spray it. Um, there was a little video about, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago of me spraying a big painting with this ink. But there are other ways of applying that ink and sometimes I take a little plastic lid, put a little drop of paint on there, of ink on there, and I take something called glazing liquid. Now, these are not rules. They're just things that I've developed. You need to play with, play with it. Of course, you can follow. So I've squeezed a little bit of that on there. And what that does is it gives me a lovely consistency to that ink so that when I paint, you can see it gives it a, a watercolory kind of effect. And what you can see now, or I can see, it might not be that clear for you, I'll again put um, a photograph on, is that the ink is catching the ridges of paint. So that's one of the ways in which I apply my ink. Oh, that's just a little bit of that. Um, but by far my favorite way to apply the ink, besides spilling it all over the canvas, is with a stick. And if any of you have seen my paintings from my exhibition drawn, you will um, have seen that I paint. Uh, no, I draw with a stick and ink. So I have got some... Uh, graphic ink. There are lots and lots and lots of varieties of this ink. Um, make sure that it's an Indian ink so that it's waterproof. So once it dries, 
it does not um, release its black if you put ink or other ink or washes on. And I've got a trusty stick. You can see that that's got lots of black on it from, from previous drawing. And I literally dip it in and I draw with it. Now, usually I'm drawing with that canvas flat, but you get the drift. So what I like about this is that it doesn't leave a perfect mark. Well, to me, they're perfect. That's exactly what I want. But it's not a drawn mark with a pen. And that gives you lovely, lovely character. So I'm even putting it now where, where I had the other ink. Now, this red ink is an acrylic ink as well. It's an art spectrum ink. And it's called water resistant. So I have found it to be pretty much waterproof. But if you give it a good scrub, sometimes it does lift. So I'm going to show you with that black ink on there and black ink on my fingers, how I move that ink. And I usually have a little spray with me. Watch what happens. I know it's going to drip. I don't, as I said, usually have it on such an angle. So I might keep a little rag with me to catch some drips. Let's see what happens when I spray that. So it's not catching much of the red. I can't see any red drips, but I can see quite a few black drips. But it is spreading the ink into where the tissue is so that previous tissue is absorbing some of that ink and it is spreading into the cracks. And these lovely lines might appear to be um, crevices in the land or tree trunks. Just showing you a couple of ways in which I use mixed media. So I'm racing through. I'm not going to be doing a particular painting, just showing you some of the mediums. Media. Sorry, keep doing that. Okay, I have discovered something fantastic. And in uh, my new exhibition, which is coming up in March with my two fellow painters, um, Dot and Sandra, will be at the Zigzag Gallery in Kalamunda from the 6th of March. So put that in your diary for, the, for our opening. Um, many of my works in there include me using this for my mixed media. And um, as you may have discovered or thought, I'm a bit of a drawer. And so these markers allow me to draw um, and paint at the same time. Now, they are big, hefty markers with a big, thick sponge. And usually, I have to have something flat. I'm just using this bit of cardboard so that you can push down and release the ink, uh, the paint off through into that sponge and once again I'm usually painting flat but you can see how wonderful this is so it's grabbing that ink so it is mixed media I'm not drawing anything in specific I'm just demonstrating we'll see what happens this can be one of my Dare to stuff it up paintings. Let's see what happens. Um, so here's a gorgeous, I love this color. I'm putting it under my snow pictures. Um, it gives a really beautiful, cool luminosity to snow. So you can put it on its side. You know, actually put drawing marks on there, or you can just generously slap it on like that. Often what I do, if I want to smooth that out like paint, um, I grab my cloth and I often spray my cloth with a bit of water and I move it around. To get um, different effects. So what I'm actually doing there is 
pushing the paint into um, the canvas and into the paper. Now you can see that part's dried already, so that's not pushing very hard. So I can't move that orange anymore. But dare I say, if I spray it really well with this, I could probably move that if I want to, and I often do. So um, looks a bit of a mess at the moment. Let's see, I'll have to post what it looks like um, if and when I finish this piece. I'm going to go on to another demonstration piece um, at the moment so that I can show you a, a couple of other ways in which I enjoy using mixed media. Now, this piece comes from, again, the same workshop that I did, um, that I showed you earlier, um, the piece from the workshop. And I had run out of canvas so at the workshop. So I had lots of these uh, pieces of paper, and I stuck 12 of them together. You can see the remnants of, of uh, paper there. There's my masking tape. It's got a number two on it. Um, and these became um, pictures of their own. And in some cases, I pieced them together, and that became um, a larger piece. And it's got lots of luscious wrinkles on it. You can, you can actually see them catching the light there. Um, and I love that. Getting back to our oil pastels, um, sorry, our oil, yes, our oil sticks or our oil pastels, there is a slight difference. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Um, these are my luscious oil sticks. Um, from what I know, these are like pure oil. Um, they form a cover on them, which you have to take off with a knife to be able to paint with it, Whether, whereas oil pastels, are a lot more uh, easy to put down. They're a little bit like wax, wax crayons. So as far as I know, that's the difference. But both of them will resist water if you want to paint across. So if I put that on there, it's um, not sticking. It's just not staying. And the same thing will happen with um, acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is water-based, so it will not stick to oil. So generally speaking, as far as I know, oils are not usually included in a mixed media piece, unless they are last bits, like this purple line here. But let's get back to those luscious creatures. Uh, um, what are they? Um, the luscious wrinkles, that's what I mean. Okay, what I have in my hand is a nice big chunk of charcoal, and this is where I really start to get excited. If I push that charcoal across, yay, you can see what's happening. That charcoal grabs those wrinkles. No, it's the wrinkles grabbing the charcoal, I think. And you've got this really exciting, happy accident almost effect of um, these darks and I've used this pretty consistently since I've had paper on the on my paintings I've used this sort of thing you can also come in and clear up some of the charcoal in between or brush it down this is when wetting the wetting the, um, the cloth helps Keep forgetting to look at who's online. Hi, Brenda, thanks for joining in. So you can see the cloth is taking up lots of, of the charcoal, but it's not cleaning up the charcoal from those luscious edges. I seem to relate lots of things to food. Luscious and delicious. Often call my paintwork delicious. So you can see how it's poured there. Now what I've got is a nice big white, it's called white charcoal. It's a bit of a misnomer, but they do call it white charcoal. But you can do this with any chalk pastels. It doesn't have to be white or, or black charcoal. You can get your colored pastels, and it will grab as well. So 
So you're getting that lovely wrinkled effect. Again, I'm going to remove some of the in between work so that I've got these crisp lines. It's getting a bit smudgy. I meant to turn the sound off. Did you hear that email arriving? Okay, so for me, that's one of my major, major reasons for putting paper down. It's also one of my major reasons for doing the Dare to Stuff It Up um, work because the original work has all these layers underneath already. So if you see one of my paintings and it's got all this texture underneath, it's because there's paper underneath. And sometimes it's because there's a previous painting, a complete painting, um, and then I've stripped back the, the varnish or I've sanded it off. Um, and sometimes it's because I've deliberately put the paper on to start off with. Just a couple of other papers. Um, you don't have to make your own paper. It doesn't have to be tissue paper. Good old, you know, um, wrapping paper. I have a suitcase of Zimbabwe stamps that uh, my parents collected, my dad collected, and we've tried to sell, and nobody likes stamps anymore. And I've often thought, hey, I should put stamps down um, to collage them or to use as uh, underneath texture. I haven't got, got there just yet. Um, looking around my desk for a couple of other things quickly to show you. Uh, the one thing I haven't shown you yet is literally uh, acrylic paint. So um, on this piece, there would be washes of acrylic paint where I've diluted the paint a little bit like my ink, but just diluted the paint. I've now scraped off that, that gorgeous um, Naples yellow onto a palette knife and Look what happens with the texture once again. So if I scrape that across, that's also catching. So you've got um, the paper gives you so much advantage. How about that? That's so exciting. And if I take just a brush, I might as well show you how I paint as well. Um, so I've loaded up my brush with that um, Naples yellow. And if I want to block in, I usually use quite quick and nasty, I call it. So that's grabbed the charcoal as well. Depending, obviously, what I want to do with it. This is not particularly attractive. It's mixed with the charcoal. It's a bit of my method. So what I would do with something that I don't find attractive is I would rub it back and see what's underneath. And I find that much more attractive. And sometimes I'll spray directly on the work and scrub the whole lot off. And it might leave a residue of the paint. But in this case, I think I've taken it all off because I didn't like it. So there's my day to stuff it up. It's one of the things I love about mixed media. If I do stuff something up, I can literally stick a piece of paper over it and not start again, but um, create a place where I can put something that I do like. So I'm just grabbing a bit of glue here, and that's the, the area I didn't like. Let's chuck a piece of paper on. And what I'm doing by, by that is providing a white base so that when that dries, that'll give me something else to go on. And now that I'm doing that, hey, guys, did you play with the people who saw my email? Did you play with your composition pieces? Well, this is a little bit like that. So I'm now looking at this and I'm going, oh, that could be a composition. Let's play with some pieces. I've already got some edges going off the edge. I'm going off the edge of the topic into composition. Um, and the last thing I want to show you, and I haven't got my knife out. 
because I've only just remembered that I have to scrape the paint at the top here. Let's see if I can do it quickly to show you how these luscious oil sticks go down. I'll use my fingernails instead of a bit of paint. There you go. So I've peeled off the surface and it won't go. Let's see what happens if I put it on the red, on the water. Yeah, doesn't like going on there. But you can see this is catching the wrinkles a little bit as well. I wouldn't use these for large areas, uh, but clearly they are good for just highlighting specific um, lines, helping the eye travel around the composition. Something like that. Um, I'm actually dying to work on this now. I want to take my red out, put some red there. What about some white? So you can see the white is much, much thicker than the pastel white, and it actually fills in the wrinkles. So these really are used just for highlights or, or something exciting. I think that's it for my mixed media. I'll take some photographs of these and post these in the section below. If you haven't already joined my Get Drawing group, please do, do so. There's a Get Drawing exclusive group on Facebook where you can share your drawings, share your paintings. There is also my email list. I am sending out emails and little things to do gives you a bit of a heads up on what the live video is. It also gives you a little bit more explanation usually about my live videos. So go along to karenfrankel.com and click on Get Drawing. And the exciting news is my book is almost ready to go to the testers. I am definitely going to be launching it this year. Woo! Probably be in October, um, but I am very, very excited about it. It won't be about this colored mixed media stuff. It is about get drawing. Um, so hope you're all on board with that. I will see you next week at 10, or if you're watching this later, pop some comments down below, put hashtag replay. Whenever you comment, it means more people get to see this video. And I love seeing that you're, you're down there. Was it a nice email? I've got a heart, yay. Um, I haven't been paying much attention to the, to the screen today, but I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration. Have a good week. Get drawing.